Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Robert Murillo here, broker associate with Team Aroa, powered by Compass, license number BK33735433, here with John. Good morning, everybody. John Sepulveda, Origin Point, and MLS 1309244. Glad to be here. Day number five of the DM. Day five, the DM, Florida Real Estate. Welcome, welcome back. We are excited here. We're about to wrap up the second half of tips for first-time home buyers. John, how was how how would you uh, grade your week so far? It's been uh, it's been interesting for sure. Uh, a lot of activity, you know, from Monday to uh, through yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we obviously had the Fed, you know, raise and you know twenty-five basis points, and the market reacting to it banking world is reacting to it um overnight uh this the shares of Deutsche Bank in Europe has gone down like 13 percent so they're starting to panic in Europe investors are mm -hmm. uh so it's going to be messy I mean it's we're going to have a messy you know days coming ahead and we knew that this week so we'll see what what the banking uh kind of crisis brings our way I mean the there's a lot of concern. There's a lot of people saying, looking at, you know, balance sheets. I've been, you know, listening to a lot of interviews and, you know, people that are in that industry and they're saying, this is going to be, this, this was just the first shoe to drop and it's going to be ugly. So let's see what mm -hmm. happens. Is there any hope for the first time home buyer looking to buy a home? There's always hope for the first time home buyer, <laughs> you know, conventional Fannie Mae, they delayed what we're talking about this week. Uh, and then I went, I went read further into it. Uh, what you asked me about this week about the loan level price adjustments for the high DTI. Okay. And I, I read an interesting article and it, it made a lot of sense actually. So what in essence, I mean, and this is, I've always known this, like this, you know, when there's a, and we talked about it earlier this week too, about FHA loans, how, you know, during the pandemic, some, some people, buyers with FHA loans were not really, the offers were not kind of left aside and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, Disregarded. So FHA is, is, FHA is a phenomenal program and up to below 760, right? So if, if you're above 760 credit score, conventional is always going to be the best option. Like there's no, there's no, but below 760 and the lower the credit score is, mm -hmm. the better option FHA becomes. Mm -hmm. um it's just payment wise and now that they just reduced the uh, mortgage insurance premium by quite a bit you know that makes that makes a big difference in you know when the in the monthly payment again especially on the lower fico score so you know below 680 all day long because on a conventional below 680 the mortgage insurance premium is really high mm -hmm. so that that offsets a lot the fha so FHA becomes a you know a more affordable option. So what I read the the article that I read on on the loan level you know price adjustments and holding off on it from Fannie, the person who wrote it was implying that that would just make it easier for for people to kind of gravitate towards FHA at the high DTI levels because that's now it's even going to be there's going to be a, when they implement that it's going to be an even bigger difference. Uh, and the in the rate and the, the payment rather mm -hmm, between mm -hmm. FHA and conventional. Now what's happening is all the lenders had already uh, programmed the level loan level price adjustments into the system. It's already been built in into the pricing engines. But so you said they, that's on hold, right? It's not in effect yet. They didn't. They they put it on hold. However, for the most part. I, I, my understanding is that lenders are already built that into the system, like put it in, in the oh, system okay, already, okay. right? So, so the rates are already, already, you can already play with the scenarios is what you're saying. No, no, no. It's already built into the pricing. Like it's already, because uh, the pricing, when you go, when you price a loan, you just, you put the parameters, you know, purchase price, down payment, credit score, single family, you know, uh, owner occupied investment, blah, blah, blah. You put all the parameters in there and this, the system you know, in our case, optimal blue, and that's okay. A so popular the the, one. the, the it, formula is already in the software. It's already in the software for lenders gotcha. in, to include the the those adjustments. So now they have to take them out, obviously, right? Because they're not they're, they're not implementing them. Mm -hmm. So it's something that was already like set to go, and they just they realized, oh, this is a big mistake. There was a lot of a lot of uh, lenders were kind of speaking out against it. 
because that was just yeah. gonna, that's just going to bring up that's just going to bring up the rate you know that's really that that, that adjustment is just going to bring up the rate so obviously given the situation and the, the high rates already lenders were concerned about hey this is going to make it more unaffordable yeah and I i'm sure why I mean, they why they they delayed it it sounds like that's becoming the goal is to make make the things unaffordable mm -hmm. so absolutely i don't know i guess let's just continue into these tips we uh we gave you guys tips um what you need to know a couple of the first few or the first half of them yesterday john didn't really agree with um which what do you mean common. i agree to all of them <laughs> <laughs> no it's okay it's okay to to disagree i actually see a couple of, of of them in here that i don't agree with today so we're gonna go through the rest of the list and um and yeah give you guys First time home buyer tips, what you need to know, how you should approach it, and what the mindset should be so that you can go through the process seamlessly and 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 comfortably and and successfully, first and foremost. Absolutely. Right? Um, then we're gonna talk about uh John's future workshop and and see how you guys can get involved to get some financial coaching going on as well. So um, we are here on six out of 10, which is do your research, right? Before making an offer on a home, research neighborhood, schools, and other factors that could affect your quality of life. I absolutely agree with this one. People should most definitely do their research on the neighborhood. Um, that's part of what comes with hiring a reputable real estate agent and or lender right, who are both local and um, and relatable and understand the, the market that they're in and understand the, the, the ideal lifestyle you would like to be a part of, mm -hmm. right? That's part of buying a home is, is the home comes with a community that comes with a lifestyle that is generally, you know, uh, congruent with the rest of your neighbors and, and everybody else who's who's involved in the community. So what do you think, John? Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. Um, I would say, uh, or I would add to it, um, number one, uh, the, the first, you know, what you said, that comes with working with a with a professional agent and, and lender. Um, you know, that's, that's what it is, right? So, you know, the listeners should, uh, the viewers should really keep an eye on that and, and do work with somebody who's a professional. In my personal case, I have this tool that I utilize called the neighborhood report card. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, people, they give me the address, I put it in the system. When I, when I have my one-on-one -on -one with them, I, we have a video conference, I share my screen, I put it on my screen, I show them, it talks about schools and just all the, the metrics that go along with that. Uh, but at least gives people an idea of what they're getting into because, you know, a lot of people go buy a house and, I mean, if you're correct me, if you see something different, but what the way I see it, people usually navigate towards different areas based on price as they get yeah. priced out of a certain area where they're, where they, what they know, what they're used to, they get priced out of it. They start going out further out to new areas where their pricing is more in their price range. And usually they'll get a list of here, are the schools and, but the name of a school doesn't really tell you anything unless the school has a really good rep or a really bad rep. That's all you're going to really know by the name of the school. So you definitely need to do some, uh, or you should definitely do some research onto, you know, the, that neighborhood and stuff. So I was going to ask you if that, if that report card, that neighborhood report card shows you the, um, the, the grade of the school. It shows you the grade of the school and it shows, I mean, it's, it shows you property, how many people live in that area. How many houses are available in the area, the demand in the area? I mean, it's really, really, really comprehensive information. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool if we can um, pull a sample of a neighborhood and have that. We can have a link to that um, for people to check out and see, like, all right, this is what a home uh, or this is a neighborhood report card for the Dr. Phillips area. Or oh, we can, we're gonna we can work on that. Yeah, let's let's uh let's connect on that and do something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So and then to add, sorry, before I lose the so, and to add to the research part, I would 
the second part is people should be careful because one thing I see is the one that does too much research. And two mm -hmm. things happen. They either get paralysis of analysis from all the stuff that they're looking at. Now they get confused. And the second thing that happens is they get a lot of wrong information because all the research is usually done online. Mm -hmm. And then people just start going online and they, they just, they get too much information. So I would say, do your research, start your research. And it goes back to the first half of the answer. You got to work with a professional agent and a professional lender who's going to, who's going to answer your questions without you having to do the research because people have the questions in their minds. They don't need to do research to the questions. They need to do research to find the answer. So if they reach out to, you know, you, myself, professional agent who, who's local, who knows what they're doing, who, who works in the local neighborhood and has this type of service, they'll be able to answer those questions for the for the homeowners. And the ones that they, they still have left after that, then they can further research and, and get the information. Yeah, that's why before I plug in any filters on the um, on the collections for my clients, actually, I, I review every home before I send them anything because I like to make sure... I'm not sending them anything that is clearly not in the neighborhood or the areas that they want to be in. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's number one. And then when they do say yes to a home, part of my, like my service, what I do um, and the research that I do is even for buyers, I do a CMA before we submit an offer just so that they are aware of what the market is saying on the value of the home Mm -hmm. and they can make a conscious decision and for us to understand whether or not we, you know, we need contingencies, um, whether or not, you know, they want to consider like if it is really the home that they need and the seller is not willing to uh, comply with contingencies, finance contingencies, whether or not they have the money to pay extra if necessary on an appraisal gap, things of that nature. Mm hmm. And of course, I enlighten them on information about the neighborhood if I happen to know the neighborhood very well. Um, other than that, you know, do whatever research I can for them and get them information based on the questions that they ask. That's that's the I mean, that's that's the perfect, you know, or I don't know if the perfect, but the proper way of doing that, you know, with a buyer, that should be it, that that research from mm -hmm. your part and then from my part is the same I, you know it's just again providing the, that resource and that information my focus is more on the financial part obviously than on the property part mm -hmm. um but that neighborhood report card is just a, a tool that i have access to that you know it makes it makes it easier for people to visualize and to have that information so definitely yeah, research so is very very important absolutely absolutely so what I'll do is I'll also include a link for a CMA so that um, they can have an example as well of what I provide. So number seven, get a home inspection. A home inspection can uncover hidden problems with a property that could cost you thousands of dollars in repairs down the road. And this cannot be stressed enough. I tell people, I don't care if the house is brand new. If the home is brand new, yeah, the builders are doing their inspections and they're going through their permitting process. So they have to have it inspected to, to, um, to pass each phase of the construction of the home. Still get a home inspection and outside a third party home inspection. Um, <clears throat> home inspections used to run between, uh, let's just say between four to $600. Now they can run between five to seven, eight hundred dollars. But the reason why I say that is because you don't want to forget about your add on inspections, right? A general home inspection might be between three to four hundred dollars, but your add ons is the important stuff. So the WDO inspection, right? Wood destroying organisms that checks for termites and bugs around the property within the wood, within the walls, um, wind mitigation, uh, your four point inspection and all that, all that is, is not only better for you to know that information, but can also help with, um, discounts on your insurance premium yeah. on your homeowner's insurance. So, um, what on the lender side, what, 
type of inspection is necessary when when you, when someone's financing a deal? What is the minimum that is required? The termite uh, for an FHA loan. That's, That's really the what the uh, requirement. Yeah, if in an FHA loan they need the the termite inspection. There's no additional uh, reporting that needs to be done. And on the FHA appraisal, there will be the appraisal will note if, for example, there's peeling paint. The appraiser will know that that has to be and that has to be that will have to be repaired mm -hmm. prior to closing. So, or if there's a crack be, window, or if there's a crack window, or yeah, I mean whatever of the and you know different safety issues that that are you know if they come up on the appraisal, it'll be noted in the appraisal, and then the the, the repairs will have to give it get done, and then the appraiser has to do a final inspection, make sure that it was done. So it's all any any inspections are are through the appraiser. Mm -hmm. uh, for an appraisal issue, or they'll need the termite. What about what about appliances? Appliances have to be included on the FHA home purchase. Just the just the stove as the like regular. Not that there's no difference between FHA and a conventional loan. Like there's no they don't okay. get into that. I it's, think, it's all I FHA. Think... It's all about. It's more. They need to be pictures of the attic. If there's an attic, there has, you know, attic or crawl space, there has to be pictures of that included in the report. Um, okay. And they look so a little bit different. The the two appraisals, appraisal reports look a little bit different. Um, and it's all about the safety, you know, so peeling paint or exposed wires or broken windows, that type of stuff. Yeah. Handrails that are loose or missing, um, outlets that are not covered, like electrical outlets, things like that. It's just all, it's all safety. Mm -hmm. safety features uh when was the last time you did a uh you financed a buyer on a new construction home the last time yeah uh june of last year, before i came over to origin point so I was, okay. I was working with a with a with a builder so all the ones i did were new okay okay so how how did that process differ from doing a, a loan on a pre-existing home in what sense? In any sense, did it differ? Not at all. It's the same same process. Yeah, no, th there's no difference other than if it's a, a to be built, you know, and they they you know they buy it, the buyer buys it today and they haven't built it yet, right? It's a to be built. It'll be mm -hmm. some time, right? Six months, eight months, could be a year, whatever, the, depending on the on the builder and on the community and the lot and all the stuff. So other than the time. It takes to close because of the, the house is being built. There's mm -hmm. really no difference in the process. Yeah. 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 I know. I, I definitely, uh, I've had a couple of instances. I would say at least two where I've, I've strongly suggested for my buyers to do, get a home inspection outside of, uh, outside of the builder for their homes. I, I had buyers, I mean, I, I, I had both. I had buyers who did not do a home inspection and I had buyers who did do a home inspection. Uh, usually the buyers that did a home inspection were working with an agent uh, and they who was, you know, more prepared or more professional or, you know, or better. I mean, I don't want to, whatever the word is, but that's <laughs> usually what I saw when, you know, that those are the, the, the buyers that did the inspections on the new construction. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were there were issues that people found stuff on the on the inspection and the new construction. Um, yeah. So in the, in in a sense, it's the the buyer thus goes through the expense of paying for it. On the you know the good part of it is they do the inspection and because of the warranty from the builder on the new construction, I mean all the stuff gets taken care of and the buyer. You know what I mean? It's the 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 fixing process is I I would think a little bit easier on the new construction than on a you know, existing home because the builder has people there ready to do it. And they, you know, they do it right away because it's a new construction. Uh, mm -hmm. I found that process to be slightly different when the, when there were issues with the inspection. Uh, but yeah. there was a good, you know, there was a, not, I mean, definitely higher number of people did not do an inspection uh, on the new property than, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. And I see that a lot. I see that a lot. They put a lot of trust into the builders. Um, which I mean is good. There are a lot of reputable builders out there, but let's be honest, when they're mass producing these homes, um, sometimes in some cases they do miss some attention to detail. 100%. I mean, there's just no volume and it's just, 
yeah, I mean, mistakes happen, things happen. It's definitely, you definitely should be pr to protect yourself and, and be do a home inspection. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so let's go on to number eight. Be prepared to negotiate. Don't be afraid to negotiate with sellers to get the best price and terms on your new home. That's especially true for today's market. 100%. Especially true for today's market. Yeah. Now that we see after all the accelerated home prices, we see, you know, sellers uh, not only being more realistic, but being more reasonable on dropping the price and or contributing to the deal. Whereas before it was, you know what, I'm not doing anything. I don't have to. If you don't want to close, we have another buyer. <laughs> yep. Is two 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 different extremes, two mm. two opposite ends of the spectrum. So one hundred percent. What are the what are the tips that you have to offer on on negotiations? Um, my tip is don't negotiate with emotion. Um, mm -hmm. you know. Don't love the property so much that you're blinded to issues and you're you're going into, you know, overbidding, you know, by fifty thousand dollars on the on the price. You know, I mean that's just that's an emotional purchase and and that's just that cannot lead to anything that's good. You know what I mean? So I my advice would be just don't get emotional into it. It's not easy, especially if it's your first home. If you you know, it's it's not an easy process and you can get emotional. But if oh, you allow absolutely. yourself to be, you make mistakes. You know, I, I had a, you know, an experience that happened to me, uh, my first new house, right? Because I came from Massachusetts. There's not a, not too much new construction in Massachusetts. That's not really a thing. You don't really, I mean, there are way outside, but I lived in the city. So there was no such thing as new construction in the city. So mm -hmm. when I came here, it was the first time I had an opportunity to purchase a new, a new, new construction, you know, yeah. to be built. Um, and, and I did that and, you know, blah, 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 long story short, the property did not appraise. Mm. Um, and I, I from the beginning, this? uh, this was in 2018. Okay. Um, and I knew the property was not going, uh, 2019, sorry. Well, yeah, it started in 2018. Um, okay. and, and I knew the property was not going to, uh, I had my doubts. I liked the property. I got into it, you know, whatever did the offer that the thing finished it up obviously i'm in you know obviously i'm a lender right i you know i didn't do my own loan because i'm not able to do my own loan but obviously i'm you know doing going through the transaction and did an appraise by 30 grand mm -hmm. um and you know i did have a contingency and you know when i spoke to the builder it was a small builder and you know i was like you know let's split the difference i'll drop it i'll drop a 15 and you give me 15 extra i said absolutely not i'm i'm not I'm not going in upside down Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, you don't understand the properties are going to appraise and the value goes up and this and that. I'm like, are you forgetting what I do for a living? This is what I do. It's not, you know, it's just not. They, were, they were selling you. Yeah. And then However, tried... nonetheless, <laughs> it wound up being true. <laughs> well, but then he and then he flipped it and he tried to go with the emotional. Well, you know, you're going to lose your first you know, brand new home, blah, blah, blah. And, and we were excited, obviously, and ready to move. And we already had like every, you know, it was ready. It was the appraisal. It was at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going an upside down. He's like, well, then we cancel the contract. I was like, okay, I guess we cancel the contract. I mean, that was like my, that was ex my exact reaction. I was like, okay, I guess we cancel the contract. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, next, let, I mean, I totally just, let's finish that. And, and I mean, unless he said, no, wait, okay, I'll give you the price of what appraised value. There was no, I was not negotiating anything. So you ended up not going into that home. No, cancel the contract. Nice. Did you get yeah. your deposit back? Oh yeah, of course. Cause I had my contract. I had, I had the contingency. I was protected. I had no, you know what I mean? I had no issue. Okay. And, but, and he, he knew how much, that. How much did you have deposited on that? Uh, whatever it was. 20 grand. I mean, I, whatever it was. I don't, I, I mean, I don't remember what the, what the, you know what I mean? I don't remember what who, the. Who, who was the builder? Small. Okay, a local like, builder. Like it's local builder, yeah. No, it wasn't okay, a big okay, builder. Yeah, yeah it was a small local builder. It wasn't. I mean, the guy was. It wasn't. He was obviously he didn't want to start the process again with a new buyer, and he didn't want to cancel it. And mm -hmm. but he was like, oh, no, I'm not gonna reduce the price. You know, give half. That was just as far as he got. I said, no, I'm not. You know, thirty grand or fifteen. If I took his job, I'm going into a transaction upside down, fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, that's that's just. Mm -hmm. 
It didn't make logical sense. It, but then, uh, but you know, th th that's like back in 2007. Oh, no, the house will appraise. Wait two years and the value. And the, I'm like, no, nah, it doesn't work. So that let way. me ask you this. Uh, you were able to make that logical decision, right? Uh, was it hard for you to convince your wife to agree with that decision? No, not on it. My wife is, uh, you know, because she was there with me. She understands the process and kind of what we're doing. And that's the challenge, think, though. The do emotional you think it would have been different if you weren't a lender. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. Because because you get the emotion, and that's that's why I my my advice is don't you cannot get emotional. And I'm speaking from experience. You know, you because mm -hmm. it's not easy. I call that I call that the used car syndrome, right? Because 99.9% .9 of the time when you purchase a new uh, a used car, it's not until you're totally blinded to all of the defects of that used vehicle until the day you drive away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you start noticing you start all noticing. the little things mm -hmm. in, in the crevices of the vehicle. And it's like, fuck. I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, don't, <laughs> don't usually curse on, on the podcast, but. It's whatever. It's our podcast, right? So yeah. it's like, damn, I didn't see this before mm -hmm. signing the dotted line. Yeah. So yeah. The, the emotional. I mean, because you get emotional. Could mask the the logical, rational things you should be looking at when it comes to, you know, because it's just like you said. If somebody says, "Hey, the interest rate is eight and a half, and this is your dream home," guess what? You're signing on that deal. Mm -hmm. If you want it that bad, you're definitely signing. But if, so. it, I mean, the emotional part, if, they, if it's a dream home, they're signing on the deal, right? They're going to do it. But if it's, if, if, if they're being offered eight and a half percent, but the market is really at six and a half percent, I mean, this doesn't happen. I'm just, I'm making up, you know, conversation here, but you know what I mean? If then you, even if it's your dream home, you go, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Let me, let me look at this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Seller financing. Right. That could be a situation. You find a yeah. dream home. You can't afford it. Or, you know, you don't qualify, whatever the case is in seller. I'll do the financing and the seller will give you, you know, the rates, you know, 7%. I'll do it for 9%. You know, seller can do that. And then the buyer yeah, we could. Gotta, we got to talk about that seller financing. Cause I have a, I had a seller ask me recently how the seller financing works. Like, cause they, what they were interested in, they would consider seller financing. But they were wondering how they can sell the note off to another investor after they close on that. Well, that the, the only way they can do that is they own the home free and clear. Yeah, they do. All right. So if they own free and clear, mm -hmm. and then I guess that, I mean, I wouldn't just find again, somebody who would, another hard money lender who would take it. I don't know. I mean, I've never gone into yeah. that, that, that part of the, the financial you know, or lending, you know, that, that sellers doing financing and then selling it off to an investor. I haven't gone yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that part. I want to yeah. look into that. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's see. Uh, number nine, budget for ongoing expenses. Major, major, major tip here. In addition to your mortgage, right, you'll need to budget for ongoing expenses like utilities, maintenance, and repairs. All right. So first of all, this is, this is very important early on, right? When they get their initial loan estimate. And first of all, understanding principal and interest, and then PITI, the P-I-T-I, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And then understanding that this payment does not include your light bill, your water bill, cable, internet, and phone. Amongst Absolutely. other things, lawn maintenance, all that stuff. So this is extremely important. What do you think? Do you see the thing in the back? <laughs> <laughs> that's the number one thing. Uh, you know what I mean? That's the budget. I mean, the sad part is only 3% of the uh, population have a budget. A budget mm -hmm. that they actually write down and that they, they keep you know track of their monthly bill. So for the most part, people do run their finances using mental math mm -hmm. which is great nothing wrong with that some of us are better than others at being able to do mental math i mean there's there's a lot wrong with that in my opinion well 
<laughs> think about but, it. It, it. Like we said yesterday, most people die with less than $1,000 in their bank account. 1,000% agree. The problem is that the sad reality is that the majority of people do not have a budget. Mm -hmm. it's 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 a tedious task it takes a lot of work it's a pain in the butt to be doing um but you have to that's the only way you can truly have control of your finances having a budget so, so is you know, that something is that something is that an exercise that you do in your workshops in your financial coaching workshop oh 100 absolutely yeah that's you know that's and the main thing it's just that's where it starts you know when you do that exercise as a group activity, kind of describe how does that work? Is it, How much time do, do you allocate for that exercise? And how does it work when, to, uh, to, when you do it as a group? But to, you mean, do I like show people how to actually like do it in the workshop, the budget? Yeah. Like, no, no, we don't. I know. I, I mean, it, it's impossible to do that because everybody's budget is different and people mm -hmm. would not open up in an up, you know, open space like that. You need one on one. Uh, what I do in the workshop is really is show the pain of not having a budget um, and just show why, you know what I mean? It's just educate, but doing the actual budget. I mean, I do general parameters and I give them a sample budget that I have that I've done for them. And, you know, and it gives them, it's already done. All you, all you really have to do is just put the dollar amount of your I mean, expenses. Your number, your, the number's personal to you. Per personal's right. And it's, but it's a, it's a, it's a challenge because people do not have one for their regular, you know, for the personal lives, like their daily lives, they do not have a budget. It's all mental math. Um, so I, but you know, what's crazy to me is the fact that people already do that. They already pay for these things, but, and, but they also pay a rent. So not only are you paying somebody else's mortgage, but you're also paying your utilities. You're also paying uh, the maintenance on the property, right? You're just restricted as to what you can do in the property that you're renting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, essentially, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think uh, having a budget is extremely important. And I think going through that exercise is 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 key and that budget how often do you suggest for that budget to be reviewed and 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 every, you know, every month you got, you got you got to do it every month you got to you got to well, it's actually daily it's not every month i mean you got to track your expenses daily now it's very easy nowadays there's a whole bunch of apps that you can do when they track your expenses and you know they kind of tell you everything but you you have to do the work i mean you have to you got to track it daily. You need to how much cash you spent because it's the little things, right? I mean, for the most part, everybody knows how much they pay for their car, how much they pay for their credit cards, how much they pay for their insurance. You know, the big things for the most people, they know what they spend it on. Mm -hmm. The problem with, with I, I, I have found with people's finances is the little things. Those are the little the little leaks that sink the ship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the it's the it's the Starbucks every morning when you go into the office. You know, and the whatever, I don't know how I don't drink at Starbucks. So I don't know how much it's, I'm a dunks guy. So I don't know how much it's, you know, <laughs> a small mortgage, a second mortgage to buy a cup of coffee, you know? So, but if you add, you know, I mean, sir, what's a cup of coffee in Starbucks? Five bucks, six bucks. I don't know. At a minimum, at a minimum, four bucks. I don't know, whatever, say four bucks. But if you do four times five, that's 20 bucks a week times four weeks. That's 80 bucks a month. That's 80. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that's just the cup of coffee in the morning what about the one in the afternoon what about the one in the break i mean it's just all those little things that people do not keep track of. that's what sinks the ship mm -hmm. because at the end of the day you know if you make five thousand dollars a month and you spend five thousand one hundred you're in the right a hundred bucks you know what i mean mm -hmm. and unfortunately it's most people it's not a hundred it's a lot more than a hundred and it's those little those little leaks that that you don't keep track of and you know you just don't you know you don't keep track of it and you don't pay attention to those little things. And mm -hmm. that's where, and that's where the discipline comes in. So that's uh, it's a daily, it, it's a pain. It's a lot of work. It's hard. But if you like, when you, in a, you know, I mean, you, you may not get it, realize that right from, from the realtor point perspective, you don't, you don't necessarily get into that conversation with buyers, right. About their finances well, no, I, like that. Right. You know, I try to, um, but I mean, but some unless, people, I try to, unless I notice that they feel uncomfortable talking about it because right. I know yeah. something I noticed about buyers is that um, unless they fully trust you, they are, you know, 
I mean, we're in sales. So one, they look their whatever their perception is of a realtor before we get into the nitty gritty details, they might have their walls up. You know what I'm saying? Like granted, I tend to have a good um, effect on my buyers, but in some cases before that barrier is broken, they're kind of like, oh, I don't want to share too much with you. Just like, like I said in the other episode, when I was like, hey, you could disclose how much you have saved up. It's not like I can remove it from your bank account or my lender can't take the money away from you. We're not going to force you to spend it all, right? Um, so some buyers are very cautious about how much they share related to their finances. 100%. Right? And then and on top, I would add to that is some buyers are very conscious to what they share about their their personal finances from a perspective of they feel, you know, embarrassed to, to share. Like if they have a, you know, a low credit Shame. score, yeah, or, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So people are afraid of that. So that's where I, you know, where They're in my case, trying to protect what they do have, what, what they've the, accumulated exactly, or protect what other people think of them because they may not be in the best situation. And exactly. Now in my case, when I do see the credit, I do see that. Like there's no, there's no, Unfortunately, or fortunately, right? Because I, I'm not able to help them if I don't see it. Mm -hmm. So with the credit, I, I see it, right? It's it's in the credit, so I can have that conversation because like, okay, tell me about this, and then opens up, and and it's you know I can see a conversation, but I can, I mean, I can't tell from looking at somebody's credit and their finances, obviously, um, but I I can definitely put them in a box where I, okay, these people have a budget. Like you can tell when somebody's finances, when you look at somebody's finances and the way they have their payments and the way that they have, and you speak to them, like they know they have a budget. They know what they make, you know, I, I'll, cause when I talk to somebody, you know, it's, what do you do? How long you been doing it for? How, how much, much do you, you make? How much you make? <laughs> and then the next one is, you know, do you have any debts? Yes. Okay. What do you have? Car payments, student loans. And then, you know, how many credit cards more or less do you have? some people tell me i got four i got my balance and this this and that my what's the minimum monthly payment it's this but i pay this right that's somebody mm -hmm. has a budget that's somebody who knows what they pay or i asked this you know I, oh, I got four credit cards what's the minimum payment on each oh i, I don't know you know they just they stay, take the minimum payment if they can send a little bit more they send a little bit more and that's what they send then so they don't they don't really have a budget mm -hmm. and unfortunately the people that do that those are the ones that are in debt, you know, they, that they take, they buy something, they pay the minimum payment and, you know, they spent, you know, seven years paying for, you know, the refrigerator that they bought with the credit card, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and cause they paid the minimum payment and that's where the credit card companies, that's where they get us. Right. Cause they know that people make the minimum payment and that's what they get you. I mean, that's, that's just, that's just the game, you know, and if you don't know how to play that game, you get sucked into that game. You have the consequences of, you know, the debt crisis that we're heading into, and it's going to be ugly. The highest it's ever been. The, the current credit card debt in America, consumer credit debt in America is the highest it's ever been. That's insane. That's insane. So <clears throat> number 10, this is the one I, I kind of disagree with. Well, not that I disagree with it, but there is a shift right after so it, it says don't rush the process right buying a home is a big decision and it's important to take your time and make a well-informed decision so okay that's great yeah definitely don't rush the process but there's a shift that once you're in it understanding that time is of the essence right <clears throat> so people uh okay not rushing the process is okay until it's time to take action and so make a decision home. but that's a right? that's a that's another step though that's a different step i yeah. would separate those two i would make 10a and 10b um yeah. because I, I i say i i'm definitely a fan of don't rush the process mm -hmm. um i don't i i tell buyers when i you know i, I don't sell anything so mm -hmm. i'll take a buyer and let's look at your finances let's look at your situation um so you and i'm going to give you the information to you so you can make a decision yeah so you know if you're trying to buy a house that's you know your your budget does not get you there like it's just not a good decision i'm gonna say well listen you gotta consider this because it's not a good decision I, I i wouldn't feel right you know 
just not telling you know what i mean like just oh yeah it's great buy the house it's your dream home yeah, I mean, just yeah, not, yeah. you know so my i'm all about what is your current situation and what are your goals mm-hmm. so i because a lot of people don't know their current situation they go to the doctor doctor i need a surgery where does this hurt my stomach you know take my appendix out <laughs> wait a minute let's do a let's do some tests let's figure it out first you know what i mean they're yeah. not going to just take your, your appendix out and it could be your gallbladder you know so you need to know where you're at now. Take an x-ray of your current situation. So that's mm-hmm. the first step I try to get people to. Not everybody does that because not everybody's interested in that. Nobody, not everybody wants to hear that. So you can't, you know, so, but for the be- most part, I try to get people to assess where they're at right now mm-hmm. and for them to where they want to go. Is this your first home? Is this your second home? Are you moving up? Are you going to downsize? Where are you going? And, you know, just what is your view? Five years from now, seven years from now, what, what are you thinking? Is this going to be, is this your forever home? Is this your, you know, and then based on that is, okay, let's, let's plan it. Okay. So, cause there's no sense in buying the house. You qualify. What's the rate? Here's the rate. Boom. You qualify, go close on the house. And then that's it. What, what, what comes next? So I try to get people to think what comes next. Well, maybe, you know, five years, my kids grew up a little bit. I like to go, you know, down or get a bigger house. And okay. So what, what does that look like? All right. So if we start saving up, you're going to have the down payment. Here's the down payment you're going to need for that house when you move up. And then he, this house, you're going to let's, you know, you can rent it and this is how it works or you can sell it. This is how it works. So people, before they buy this house, I'm, I'm already given a plan of what's, what's next based on what their current assessment of what, what's next is. That may change, but at least I like to leave people with a plan and say, okay, this is the, and, and stay in touch, you know, stay in contact with them throughout after the closing. Because this mm-hmm. is the, it's not going to be the first home they they close right they so the idea is once they enter my ecosystem you know they stay in that ecosystem and I provide them with information along the way for any future you know financial or financing needs that they have yeah. so it's it's so the process is and if if I talk to somebody right now and they're not ready it's not the process they don't qualify they don't have all the you know they don't have what they need it's not oh, it's, well, you know, good luck. It's really, okay, here's the plan. Here's how we get you there. And, you know, could be the a year from now. Play. But the play by play, put me in coach. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and this is what you do. And then you're going to buy a house in a year. You know, don't rush the process. Now, 10B is you definitely, you cannot have paralysis uh, analysis. You need to make a decision. You need time to is be, of the essence. Once you do make the decision, it's go time. It's yep. like, hey, provide the, the lender with all the documents that you need. We need to book the inspection. We need to we need to negotiate after the inspection if necessary. We got to put in that earnest money deposit. And it doesn't matter how many times a lender requests something, even if they're requesting the same thing over and over again, you got to get it back to them in a timely manner. That's I try to uh, make sure my clients know that from the get go. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you if you have a plan. If you, prov- if you provide people with a plan and the person is really looking to, you know, in this case, buy a house, people will follow that plan for the most part because they people want to people want to reach their goals. People want to have, you know, be successful and have their home. And, you know, they dream about that. It's the, you know, it's the American dream, you know, and people yeah, need yeah. that and want that. You know, I mean, it's a cliche, but it's true. Like It you know, is. It absolutely just, is. They, they, people want to, you know, own their home. I mean, it's just it's just you own something, you know, you own your land you live on and it's you know, and if people want to do that. So if they have somebody who guides them and shows them how to do it, they'll gladly, you know, pay attention and do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, all right. Well, th- those are the 10 tips, right? Really quickly, really briefly, we're going to have, we're probably going to have a full episode on this next week. Um, let's discuss like the whole financial, financial coaching. I think it's very important for people to have a financial coach for them to understand their budget. What um what plans do you have in the future for a workshop? I know you did one. When was it? Was it last in November? Uh, it was uh it was the hurricane. Oh, okay. So I did, okay. Yeah, so we had one scheduled and the the, the, the they had the hurricane, so we had to cancel it cuz you know, they closed the place. So that, you know, so it was all whenever the hurricane was, uh, September-ish, whatever yeah, that month yeah, that yeah. was. Uh, and then we had to reschedule it and it was um, uh, you know, it was, it was messy that the hurricane kind of, kind of threw a, a little wrinkle into the plants. 
Um, yeah. It was my first experience. You know, I've been through here a couple of hurricanes, but never really got my, you know, affected. Like, you know, this one was like, ah. yeah, I was like, what do you mean? Is And then it was like during the, at, at the time of the seminar, it, was, it wasn't even raining. I'm like, it's not even raining. Why are you going to cancel it? But <laughs> Because so, I knew it was a nightmare. This it just, it, you know, people were, there was a lot of people going, actually, it was good interest in it. But anyway, um, the way it, uh, I mean, it's just something I created. It's really not, um, it's nothing, nothing fancy, nothing. It's just something I, information I put together. Um, during the pandemic, I I got certified as a, as a Ramsey financial coach, and I got certified as a financial educator, mm -hmm. uh, which means I can do like workshops and things like that you know for more than one person and then for financial coaches like one-on-one -on -one. yeah um and it, i just you know i shifted and just had a sort of shift and i've been doing that throughout my career kind of helping people guiding people but not not officially, officially you know so <laughs> um i kind of I, I felt that that's the way you know at the beginning again this, i did this was all during the pandemic i kind of said oh you know what let me put this something together and i, I the reality is i started uh, put it together for church like to do it at church and just kind of volunteer and help out i've been doing that as well for a long time informally yeah. not you know nothing you know so i just i got certified i had the time to do it i you know spent the money to do it and i and i started i so i've i've incorporated that into my job which is being a loan originator um yeah. so i just offer that i don't charge for it i don't, I don't charge any money i don't i don't make money you know, doing this for people. My job is a loan officer. That's where I, that's how I make a living. The financial coach, and I just do it as a, as an add-on, as an additional, as an, you know, service. Uh, I provide the buyers, not the buyer, not just the buyers. I mean, if, you know, if they don't buy, if they work with me, I give them a free financial plan, um, okay. which is ex extensive. It's an extensive document. There's, you know, you got to put, you got to put work into it to do it. Um, and it's a really neat thing. I send them the link and, if I was to sell that, like the retail value of that thing is like 1500 bucks. Uh, that's what they sell those for. Mm. And you know what? Ask any wealthy person if they have a financial plan and they're going to say yes. And ask them how long do they do it? It's every year at least. Because that's something mm -hmm. that's just, that's, you know, wealthy people have that. Um, so I said, all right, well, if wealthy people have it, well, why not just everybody? Like, you know, so I found this provider that I have and I, bought the service and I provide that and I don't charge people for it. Um, you know, it's just something I, I do. And then I do, you know, I, a budget and, and I, I did a course, I recorded a course online and I give, you know, buyers access to that. And there's a lot of information. I, I, I like to, to provide a lot of information. That's why I'm doing this as well with you. It means just recording information and having information available for people. So, so at some point, if somebody gets helped by it, I, I you know, I'm all for it. Um, and if, Absolutely. You know, so next week we're, you know, I definitely want to go into further detail with that. Um, and let's see, when, when do you think you're going to be hosting your next event? I honestly haven't, haven't started, haven't, it's, it's in my to-do list and I haven't started planning it yet. I, I, at the time when I was doing that, I, I had the time to put together and I'm like, oh, let me do this. And, you know, unfortunately, like I said, the, the hurricane kind of, threw a wrinkle in the plans and you know and now i mean i just this it's so busy to I, it's there but i haven't planned it so i can start planning it do it well you know we'll put it together uh, maybe we, maybe we do maybe we do maybe we do something online yeah 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 no i'm definitely gonna be there for sure so yeah. <clears throat> we'll get more details on that absolutely yeah yeah um any any last golden nuggets for the first time home buyers before we sign off i mean i think that all this list is great. All the stuff, the information is great. We, this is not new. This is out there. Um, but I think really what needs to, ha you know, what the, the most important thing is, and is what we end up, you know, the last point on is you need to make a decision. I mean, you need to do the math and the, the, the best tip that I can give a first time home buyer or somebody who does not currently own a home um, and they're paying rent is don't listen to the hype. Don't listen to the media. Uh, you know, you know, we're not trying to sell people and convince don't, people. Don't to listen. Buy a house. Don't listen to someone who hasn't bought a house in over twenty years. Yeah, I mean, it's just <laughs> it, it's. I mean, definitely rates are high. Definitely property values are high. I mean, it's that's that's a reality. So you, you know, we we cannot live in the past. We can't say, oh, you know, we have to live. This is the present. This is what we have, and it's either you're paying rent or you're not. 
and it's it, there's no different. You, you you have no choice. You you have to live somewhere. So if you're paying two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a month to live in a house and and pay somebody else's mortgage, you can spend the twenty five hundred, maybe a couple of hundred more, and have your own place. And you have a budget, and you you know, and then start don't don't drink in Starbucks every day, and then you know fix your budget and adjust yourself and make some sacrifices and buy your house and start building equity in your home. Because mm-hmm. when you're renting and you're already paying the rent, you're you're building the equity for the landlord. And not only that, when you're buying a house, you're locking in the price because you buy a thirty you you buy a property with a thirty year mortgage, and your rate's not going up. Mm-hmm. Your rent goes up every year, doesn't go down. I don't know anybody. I've never met anybody. And at the time <laughs> in my life that I rented, I never met anybody whose landlord, when the, the, you know, the lease was up or the year was up, they reduced their rent. I've never yeah. met it. That, that's never happened. I got, it could, but oh, it's never happened. Over the last 30 years plus, rents have not gone down. But they don't go down. Why, why would they go down? down? <laughs> how, like, how, I, how, how would they go down? Why would they go down? If yeah. I have somebody else paying my mortgage and I'm making money, and they're already paying me X. Why? Oh, let me reduce it. You know, that, that's just. That's yeah, not, I don't. I don't need as much money for my yeah. retirement. I mean, you know what I mean. It's just. But when you buy, things aren't, things aren't getting more expensive around. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people help others. You know, but that's the. You know what I mean. It's just not. It's not something that rent does not go down. But you get a thirty-year mortgage. Now, granted, if you buy now, it's at seven percent, and the rates go down. Yes, you do refi because you lower the payment. Mm-hmm. But you don't refi into another 30 year mortgage. If you refi, you know, three, two years from now, don't do a 30 year, do a 25 year mortgage, right? Mm-hmm. If you can afford to cut a couple of, you know, years off the mortgage and actually put yourself in a better place. So that's and your payment's going to stay the same. What will change? You know, property taxes, that could increase. Your homeowner's insurance, that could increase. But your mortgage payment, principal and interest will not change for the life alone unless you refinance. Mm-hmm. when you have when you pay rent you do not have that this, this, that's just not a thing so you may not be paying this year 2700 using the same example that i used earlier you know the same amount of money but mm-hmm. in three or four years you will be over 2700 because the rent the rent will increase over time and you will be higher than that so Absolutely. it's it's and it's all math you just have to you know one of my favorite lines it's liars figure but figures don't lie you just mm-hmm. if you see the numbers in front of you, it's there. I mean, that's and, and you make an educated decision based on numbers, based on figures. Mm-hmm. So now is the time to buy. Don't wait. <laughs> all righty, then. So that's all we have for you today, folks. Um, Robert Murillo, broker associate with Team Aroa at Powered by Compass Florida, license number BK3373543. With John, John, John Sapova, you know. Origin Point, and MLS one three zero nine two four four. We will talk to you on next week on the next episode of the DM. Make sure you slide into the DM from Monday through Friday, every day of the week. Alrighty. Talk to you later, everybody.